Welcome back to WTDU, where our goal is to teach you about the products not only that we manufacture, that we also sell. These are gonna be general products available for use on your vehicle. Today, we are gonna have some fun as we wanna discuss one of the major suspension components on many of the vehicles that you currently drive. Today's lesson is going to have a ton of information, so we're actually going to break this up into three parts. That way you can just digest all of this. I want you to get the most most out of it and really enjoy WTDU. This lesson today will be on leaf springs, commonly found on cars, pickup trucks, class C RVs, and many class A RVs. And we are going to break this lesson down into eight key points. First, what is the leaf spring? Two, the types of leaf springs. Number three, how does the leaf spring actually work? There's going to be a good amount of information in this lesson, and our goal is to give you a better understanding of how the leaf spring works and how you can benefit from having the right spring built for your van or RV. The one thing that I ask of all of you out there in WTDU class is to please leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this topic. You can also give this video a big thumbs up if you learned something new. And the best thing that you can do is hit that big red subscribe button down below and join me in class for more WTDU education. So let's bounce in today's lesson on leaf springs. Number one, well, what is a leaf spring, right? So a leaf spring is a simple form of suspension commonly used in vehicles to absorb shocks and provide support between the axle and chassis. It consists of multiple thin curved strips of steel known as leaves stacked on top of each other and clamped together with a center bolt or clamp. The ends of these leaf springs are fixed into an axle or chassis while the center bolt or clamp allows it to flex and move with the suspension movement. So leaf springs have been used for centuries and have a long history dating back to ancient civilization. However, the modern leaf spring design as we know it today was developed during the 18th century. This credit for its innovation is often given to French engineer Nicolas Joseph Cagut, who is also known for building one of the first self-driven propelled vehicles. That's pretty awesome. And in 1770, Cagnut's steam-powered vehicle utilized springs as part of its suspension system. So this goes back a long time. Since then though, the leaf springs have been widely used in various types of vehicles, including cars, trucks, and trailers, while other suspension systems such as coil springs, airbags have gained popularity in recent years. Leaf springs still continue to be used in many applications due to their simplicity and cost effectiveness. So now that we know what a leaf spring is, let's talk about the different types of leaf springs. There are several different types of leaf springs, each with its own configuration and application. And here's the most common types. So first, you're gonna have your single leaf spring. This is the simplest form of leaf spring consisting of a single curved leaf. It's primarily used in light duty applications such as small trailers and motorcycles. Next, we're gonna have a multi-spring pack. Multi-leaf packs are made up of multiple leaves stacked together. The leaves are usually varying lengths and thickness with the longest leaf at the top. These springs are commonly used in vehicles ranging from cars to heavy duty trucks. And this is something commonly used here at Weld Tech Designs. Next leaf spring is going to be a parabolic leaf spring. Parabolic leaf springs have a tapered shape where it's thicker in the middle and gets thinner as it reaches the outer section of the spring. These springs provide a progressive spring rate, offering a smoother ride and improved load carrying capacity. Parabolic leaf springs are often used in commercial vehicles and can be used in off-road applications. Specifically, we see a lot of parabolic springs are commonly used on the F53 chassis found in your Class A motorhome. Now, currently at Weld Tech Designs, we offer a third or fourth parabolic spring that you're able to add to your existing leaf pack to keep the cost down in order to expand on the weight carrying capacity as well as reduce sway. I definitely encourage you to come back and learn more about these parabolic springs as we put them to the test out in the lab. So it's gonna be really great. So again, guys, that's why I'm asking you to hit that subscribe button down below and hang out with me, your Professor Jay, as we get more into this. Now we're gonna dive into the fourth spring, which is going to be really important as well. 
Not commonly used in a lot of our applications, but that's gonna be the elliptical leaf spring. So elliptical leaf springs consist of multiple leaves curved in an elliptical shape. They're commonly used in heavy duty applications such as large trucks, buses, or where high load carrying capacity and stability is required, like a dump truck. Number five is going to be a traverse leaf spring. Traverse leaf springs are mounted perpendicular to the vehicle's axle and provide suspension support for both left and right wheels simultaneously. We're coming up on number six, and that's gonna be quarter elliptical leaf springs. Now, quarter elliptical leaf springs are similar to an elliptical leaf springs, but they only have one quarter of the elliptical shape. Wow, that's a lot. So they are commonly used in vintage or classic cars as well as some custom low rider vehicle applications. So we're gonna get into number three now and that's actually how does a leaf spring work? So a leaf spring works by flexing or providing support between the axle and the chassis of a vehicle. It is a simple suspension component that absorbs the shocks or energy and helps maintain proper ride height. Here's a simplified explanation of how a leaf spring works. A leaf spring consists of multiple thin curved strips of steel known as leaves. These leaves are typically tapered in shape with the longest leaf at the top and shorter leaves on the stack as it moves towards the bottom. These leaves are held together by a center bolt. At one end of the leaf spring, it's going to be attached to the chassis of the vehicle, while at the other end, it's going to be connected to a second pivot point, usually with a shackle. Now, in that center pivot point is going to be your axle and allows the leaf spring to flex and pivot as the vehicle moves. So let's talk about the load distribution on this. When a vehicle encounters bumps or uneven road surfaces, this forces the wheels that are transferred to the axle of the leaf spring it distributes these forces along its length, helping it to evenly distribute the load between the wheels and the chassis. Next, we're gonna have the flexibility. As the vehicle encounters bumps, the leaf spring flexes and bends to absorb along with the shocks. The curved shape of the leaf spring allows them to flatten and elongate, storing that potential energy. After a leaf spring is compressed, it rebounds back to its original shape, pushing against the force applied to it. This rebound actually helps stabilize the vehicle and prevents excessive bouncing. Now this is also where it's going to be really important to have a good quality shock that can control the rebound in that leaf spring so that it doesn't extend too quick and give you that bouncing or pogo feeling that you could typically get out of your vehicle. We're gonna talk about a really important one now and that's gonna be the load carrying capacity. Now the biggest thing that's gonna affect the load carrying capacity is going to be the thickness of the springs as well as how many springs are going to be in that leaf pack. This is gonna be really important because all of these springs are gonna to work together to support the weight of the vehicle and additional loads. So a heavier load may need a thicker leaf spring where a lighter load could use a thinner leaf spring. Now typically here at Weld Tech Designs, we may add thinner leaf springs but more leaf springs in order to change the progression rate to give you a smoother ride. However, when you get into larger vehicles like an RV, we may start off with a really thick spring to really help carry the initial load of the coach. Now, as you load that coach up, we want it to also smooth out the ride. So then we can also have the ability to go to a thinner leaf spring for the remaining leaf springs as the springs get shorter to change the progression rate of the spring. And this is going to be really important to give you a smooth driving van or RV. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up this class of WTDU. I thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope that you guys gained a ton of information about leaf springs in this video. I would encourage you to leave a comment down below and tell me what you learned in this video and possibly if I did miss something, leave that comment down below as well. I would love to maybe touch base on that in a future class session here at WTDU. So guys, I just wanna thank you so much. I'm Professor Johnson, or uh, you guys, my friends out there at WTD, you can just call me Professor J, and I will see you guys in the next class. Class is dismissed.